2024 lead a new snapshot of Republican voters likely to participate in the first in the nation New Hampshire primary. In New Hampshire right now, according to this poll, Donald Trump holds a 14 point lead over Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. That's 37 percent to 23 percent. This is a new poll from the University of New Hampshire Survey Center. South Carolina Senator Tim Scott is in third place. He has 8 percent, followed by former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie and North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum at 6 percent each. Vivek Ramaswamy and four South, former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley are both at 5 percent, with all others at 1 percent or below. Uh, let's discuss. So, Eva, Trump has a double-digit lead, but, but DeSantis in the hunt is in the hunt there, and it's a lot smaller, that this lead in New Hampshire, that we see in national polls. And the state-by-states are far more important than the national poll. This also suggests that two-thirds of the people in New Hampshire, Republicans in New Hampshire, don't want Trump. <laughs> Yeah, this is still very much a competitive contest. We talk about this all the time, but this is why the ground game is so significant. This is why these candidates, the whole game is meeting as many voters in these early states as possible. I just looked up uh, the amount of people that turned out in 2020 in New Hampshire in the Republican primary is about 150,000 people. In Iowa, in the Republican caucus in 2020, that's about 32,000 people. So when you have the electorate that small in these early states, I mean, you know, these candidates can really just, you know, spend as much time as possible there, meet as many people there, and there could be surprises. And what do you make of this? It, two, two thirds not in the Trump column as of right now in New Hampshire among Republicans. It's a poll. I, Jake, I don't, uh, maybe <laughs> I'm just an old song. I don't think anything's changed. I think this is Trump's nomination until somebody takes it from him. It was a great interview with DeSantis this week, but even him, I don't see any of these candidates trying to beat Donald Trump. He's going to be indicted, and, and look at none of them are attacking him for that. Well, Chris Christie is. And Chris Christie doesn't count because he really doesn't have a chance to win. I'm talking about the candidates who have a shot. None of them are attacking Trump. They're all waiting. It's weird. They're all waiting for something to happen to Trump. Yeah, yeah I think it's a mistake to dismiss them too early I in the did. process. But yeah. that's, that's just To dismiss my, who? Chris Christie? Oh, or? All, all of these candidates. Yeah. All of these candidates. Um, uh, Francesca, uh, Tim Scott in third place right. in this poll. Uh, Super PAC supporting him just announced a $40 million ad campaign. That's the largest booked by any candidate so far. Um, if one perceives DeSantis as kind of like being stuck... Uh, and I'm not saying I do, but do you think there's an opening here for Tim Scott? Well, he certainly has a lot of resources to be able to continue to compete, and that's not not everyone can say the same exact thing. You're seeing some of those candidates like Asa Hutchinson, who's down in this poll. You know, they had him hovering at almost zero percent. He didn't bring in um, nearly anywhere close to the same kind of haul that some of these other candidates did. When you're looking at what Tim Scott has cash on hand, uh, he again he would be able to compete in all three of these states and and continue into those Super Tuesday states. One thing about the Trump numbers in that poll, though, is that the people who are with him. Three quarters of them say that they are with him. He's their guy. They're sticking with him. And so that, I think, is significant. Also, though, he has dropped by five points since April in that poll, whereas you see Ron DeSantis' numbers staying essentially even. So it's not Ron DeSantis who's losing support in New Hampshire. It's Donald Trump. Interesting. Can I just say one thing on this? The, the reason why this is still anyone's race, I do think it's Donald Trump's race to lose, but it's because Iowa and New Hampshire rarely like to do the same thing in a primary. So even if Donald Trump wins in the Iowa primary, Iowa primary or caucus, it does make it hard for folks to get momentum, but New Hampshire is known to kind of push back and say, but we want, and with this poll, six out of 10 New Hampshire and saying that they don't want to actually support Donald Trump, I do think it gives opportunity for folks if they can stay in the race that long. I heard a lot of conservatives uh, praising uh, DeSantis for stepping outside of the conservative media bubble yeah. and doing the CNN uh, interview. Uh, and one of the things that's interesting about media bubbles, and look, there are liberal ones, there are conservative ones, et cetera, et cetera, is that sometimes you might say things and you're miscommunicating, and uh, let me explain. Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, <laughs> gave a speech the other day, the conservative firebrand, MAGA extraordinaire from Georgia, and in her speech, she talked about how Joe Biden was trying to finish what LBJ did, finish what FDR did. <laughs> now, in her bubble, that automatically means horrible, bad, FDR, worst guy in the world, but to the rest of the world, FDR is considered a great president. Um, so. Biden did something interesting. His campaign did something interesting. 
Um, and they turned it into an ad. Take a look. Joe Biden had the largest public investment in social infrastructure and environmental programs that is actually finishing what FDR started that LBJ expanded on. And Joe Biden is attempting to complete programs to address education, medical care, urban problems, rural poverty, transportation, Medicare, Medicaid, labor unions. And he still is working on it. I like how she said, urban problems, <laughs> urban <laughs> problems. By whatever do you mean by that? Uh, pretty brilliant. Brilliant. And it is telling that that is someone who is running in a general election. He is saying, if you think that the Republican Party is too extreme, your own folks, you know, they misused her words a little bit, but it was brilliant. Come over. We are doing things that the average American finds that around the economy around so many issues that people find important. I thought it was well done, and I think everyone should give a tip, a hat tip to the Biden campaign. She could, I mean, she could have been more clear if she was trying to, <laughs> right. if she was trying to speak outside the bubble. If she was trying to say like, we don't believe in big government like FDR did, like, but but she's speaking so much, preaching so much to the choir uh, that she just. And at that event, Jake, yeah. she was purely speaking to the Republican Party base at that event because they ate it up. But it served it served right into Joe Biden oh, and his completely. campaign strategy right now, yeah. which partly is to cut things that Republicans are saying, turn them into ads, put it on air, and, and put money behind it. I, I don't I think that one's running online right now, but that is broadly what their strategy is while he continues to focus on the things that he wants to focus on as president and the business of being president. Yeah, that's trolling more than it is an, an actual ad buy, at least at this point. But at this point, at this point, but that is largely what their their strategy is right now is to let Republicans say what they're going to say in this race. I mean, it illustrates that we live in two different Americas, <laughs> basically, and the same could be said of the left. You know, you could play back something uh, on that someone says on the left and it'll get, you know, roarous applause and then you could play it for right-wing audience and they might be horrified. So, uh, yeah, it just, just illustrates we're living in... in oh, it does. I mean, I could totally imagine uh, some Democratic congressman talking about how important it is for... Fauci and Christopher Ray and like all these people that right wingers consider to be bad guys, uh, you know, to, to be given power and respected in this and that. And the right wing would do the same thing. They would do the same thing. It was a brilliant commercial. And again, this is Biden's secret sauce. He needs to stay above all of this and speak to most Americans. Quick question. I do wonder, I did wonder what you thought when I asked uh, Governor DeSantis about uh, the possible indictment. And he said, quote, uh, that he hopes it is, it, it, he, this is not the quote. I hope it doesn't happen. He said something like that, quote, I don't think it will be good for the country. What did you think of that? Well, you said, the question, Jake, was perfect because you said, what if He Smith finds evidence found of criminality. Evidence of criminality. Right. Boom. And he just wouldn't even touch that. Yeah. I which mean, I thought was really disappointing. But, and I asked, but it makes sense politically. I asked it twice. I evidence of criminality. You said that word twice. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Thanks for paying attention. Uh, thanks to one and all for being here.